According to the state, BWI Thurgood Marshall Airport saw over 2.6 million passengers pass through their gates in July 2024. Among them, at least 63,000 passengers needed assistance. To help them better, researchers at Morgan State are developing an autonomous wheelchair. It will help passengers with disabilities move through the airport more independently. I'm legally blind. Julie Terrell arrived this morning to visit family for the first time here in Baltimore. She's pretty independent, but in an unfamiliar airport, there are unfamiliar obstacles. If it's a larger airport, I have a wheelchair assist. She tells me it's easier than stopping constantly to ask people for directions, but the service isn't always efficient. I have to wait for a long time for somebody to be available. Now, transportation and electrical engineering students from Morgan State are testing their autonomous wheelchair to deliver passengers from parking lot to gate at BWI. They've been testing here for over a year. I think that's fantastic. I would try that. Um, it's a little daunting because I feel like somebody should be able to see. Enter the tech. The eyes take the form of QR-coded tracks and LiDAR to navigate the busy halls. So we use this camera that is focused on the track. Dr. Kofi Niarko is in charge of the engineering side of this project and he explains. And it goes from one location to another based on an internal map, sensing obstacles along the way. The LiDAR, or light detection and ranging, uses laser pulses to detect objects near the chair. This is similar to the LiDAR used in self-driving cars. They have a three-dimensional LiDAR, so they're not just scanning in one plane, but they're scanning in three. So we can build point clouds or distances to various points around it in like a 3D environment. This LiDAR is a bit simpler because it's less expensive. And that's the key. We want this to be accessible. That is one of the major goals for this project, to make sure the chair remains affordable. The cheaper LiDAR used here scans in two dimensions, which they've found is more than enough data for this application. And speaking of data, that factors into all of their projects at Morgan State. We care very much about the way data is collected, the way data is used because there are privacy concerns, there's bias concerns. So we operate on the principle of just do the least amount necessary to get the job done. They've even thought through of the angle of the cameras on the device, so there is no inadvertent recording of people using the chair. So it makes you independent and, and mobile. Dr. Mansoura Jehani directs the transportation engineering side of things. So let's see how this goes. She says this is the third phase of the project. Tests in the campus lab were successful. Then came the real world. When we came here, there were so many different details, different lighting, shadowing, and different um, texture and colors of the floor and uh, reflection that it comes to the cameras and all that. Again, technology to the rescue. We do use machine learning, um, which is a form of artificial intelligence. And we have used the system's ability to collect lots of examples of what the guides look like under varying conditions and trained itself to distinguish what is the guideline and what is not the guideline. The use of AI is another point of concern. Again, Morgan State researchers are careful in how they take advantage of what AI can do. We believe that AI has a role, but it has to be a very specific role. We implemented something called narrow AI, and with narrow AI, there's a very limited set of things that we're using AI for and nothing else. We want to set an example that not only our researchers at Morgan can follow, but other researchers at other institutions, and heck, even industry can follow. Don't chase what is possible only. Follow what is practical. And then there's what happens to the people who do this job now. I like to look at the autonomous wheelchair really as solving a more immediate problem that we have, which is a shortage of labor. According to the Passenger Experience Desk at BWI, 325 people were staffed to cover the tens of thousands of needed rides. If we could augment them by saying, hey, wheelchair, drive yourself back to the parking area or to the charging dock or wherever else, that would free them up to do more. So we want the human-to-human -human contact to remain exactly where it is. This is what human beings are good with, you know? Dealing with people, solving problems creatively, do, the, do those things, and not the things that are wasting time or monotonous. From here, the sky's the limit. 
and Dr. Jahani hopes to see others use this device elsewhere. We started from the airport, but it could be used in hospitals, in museums, any large buildings that is confusing where to go. And as for Julie, she says, let's go for it. Any help I can get, I appreciate. I can't imagine having to have done this 15 years ago. The next phase of the project is to practice full autonomous navigation in the airport's busiest locations. So next time you're flying through, watch out, an AI wheelchair may pass you by. At BWI, Christy Harper, WMAR 2 News.